we really, really, really mean it this time. <laughs> I think I had the camera on upside down, the camera phone, because we still don't have a, right cam a good camera. <laughs> Sorry about that, and hello on this Friday. Um, we are here again. I'm Suzanne DeWitt Hall. This is Declan, my husband, DeWitt Hall, and we're back with you. Yeah, hey, Cookbook Love family. We are about to enter into another week, so we are here Live with our cookbook of the week. Yes. You want to tell them what it is, love? Let's tell you what it is. So, this week we're talking microwave cooking. This is the Montgomery Ward. That's a whole subject all on that its is own. That is a whole subject. Ward. Um, <laughs> adventures, adventures in microwave cooking. Look at those pasty potato balls right there. <laughs> and I'm guessing that that is some French onion soup, although... I can't really be certain. I didn't check. Um, on the back cover, this is a very nice book, by the way. It's hardcover. You can see about how thick it is. On the back, we have some interesting, puckery-looking, semi-raw zucchini that are stuffed there. Um, <laughs> so, you know, all the wonders of microwave cooking is what we're going to be talking about this week. Do you remember M Montgomery Ward from back in the day? Does it still exist? I do. I remember when microwaves first started becoming popular and they were super expensive. I mean, yeah, that was like in the in the eighties that I bought mine. I remember the first one being early eighties, eighty one or eighty two, something like that. Mm -hmm. And um it was huge. Was your first one big? It was I mean, really it was big. Really it took up like the whole counter. Monster. Now you can get these ones that are almost the size of a toaster. Although I don't so know what's gonna change. So Although mostly we do um, I know. It's leftovers like leftovers and heating up coffee. And coffee, yeah, water for tea, tea or something. Yeah. yeah. But apparently they jumped on the bandwagon. I'm curious what year this is because of when microwaves came out. This one is from 1979 and it was published by the Culinary Arts Institute. It was oh, interesting. Look at there. But it's for, um, you know, you can see the Montgomery Ward uh, logo up there. And this is an interesting little snippet. It's got a pocket. It looks like a, an old CD, which maybe that's what it was. I haven't thought about it. Um, the oversight, It says, please use this pocket for your microwave oven operating instructions. Probably a See? little booklet. So I pictured a booklet, but it's exactly, it looks like the right size for an old school um, floppy disk. I wonder if they sold them next to the microwaves. And they had the, they said you should put the instruction booklet in it. The price is right there. It was eight ninety five for which I think for back in the day is a fairly I mean seventy nine you know, nine bucks is is kind of a lot of money for those a books book. are going that exact book is going anywhere from fifteen dollars up now. Really? Well, aren't we? It's our investment again. <laughs> so let's take a look at what we can expect to find in this little Joyful Nugget and why I described it. This was interesting. Um, this is a section on desserts. Um, and it's got cakes, a number of cakes. Yellow cake, old-fashioned fudge cake, pre cake, prepared cake mix, layer cake. But for several of them, this one's an applesauce cake. It says, hint, if the corners of cake are baking too fast, cover each corner with a small piece of aluminum foil. <laughs> Have you ever used aluminum foil in your in your microwave oven? I mean, it used to be I that, that you was like put it in the microwave. exactly. I, I thought okay for the oven, but the microwave. Have you tried it? And mm. if you have, please report back about. Let's do that and peeps later. That? We don't have any peeps. Oh darn! It's so sad. I know what happens with peeps, but I think micro uh, um, foil in the microwave doesn't really seem like the best idea. Neither do peeps, but oh no, we like to live life on the wild side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here is a lovely page ah. with some absolutely gorgeous gelatin treats. Look at that orange glass, the glass with the orange dessert in it. My goodness, isn't that a sexy little thing? And then that jiggly um, purplish <laughs> thing is some sort of port wine, but some red <laughs> stuff. Mystery um, creation there on the bottom. It looks kind of like peaches with a slice of cucumber. It probably isn't, but it, it could very well be. Um, and then it, this recipe is called jellied cubes. Oh. So not jello cubes or not gelatin cubes, but jellied cubes. That's something so. I wouldn't think about jello in the microwave. I don't know. I guess you heat, heat the water and let's see what it says. Jello? Yeah, that's all they're doing is heat. I mean, that's wow. the way I've made it for generations without even having an instruction book. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, this is a picture of some manicotti and some dried pastas there. And the yeah. reason that I put this um, page aside is because it has this thing called Marzetti, this recipe for Marzetti on it. And I never had heard this term before, but Johnny Marzetti, um, it's kind of like, you would call it American goulash, sort of, yeah. um, or, excuse me, American chop, chop suey. suey, your family called mm -hmm. it from New England. Um, mine would have called it goulash. So this is, but the, and there's all kinds of varieties since I've been reading vintage cookbooks. Um, and, but uh, and they're spelled differently. Johnny Marzetti, Mozetti, Mozetti, all kinds of things. <laughs> if you have a Johnny Marzetti recipe and tell me um, that you make or your family has made, please put it in the comments and let me know um, what part of the country you're from. And I'll post this mm -hmm. one so that we can kind of compare our Mozetti, uh, Marzetti. Mosetti instructions. Okay, this is the piste de resistance. Uh oh, watch out. Oh, boys. Now, the well, picture is, is going to show up better huh? oh. in the still photo, but I'll oh, hold my. it up in this hopes that you can see this little beauty. I'm going to get real close. Do you see what that is? It's like a ring around the raw fish, is what it looks like with some special um things on the eyeballs oh no <sighs> this recipe is trout <laughs> amandine with pineapple so in the middle there uh. so these are our trouts apparently cooked in the microwave they don't look cooked they look very shiny and like freshly plucked from the water so i don't know if that's a food stylist thing or what's going on um but in the center there's pineapple and almonds so these are the things you can look forward to in the cookbook of the week well, it's going to be a fun way. This looks like a fun cookbook, and there are a lot of great vintage microwave stories and pictures, and we hope you share some of your recipes and yeah. things you've used in the microwave. I can tell you one thing. I remember when my grandmother first got a microwave, and she had no idea what to use to put in the microwave mm, the or how to, how to cook with it. And actually, she had to go get a cookbook because she was used to doing things on the stovetop, and this was really a big change and a challenge for her. I remember buying her some some bowls to use to put to use as a Smart. microwave. Good and then gift. after that she did her egg in there just about every day. Huh. So That's we funny. want to hear your stories. Suzanne's gonna share the cookbook of the week all week. I am and um, there's a good possibility that we posted this on the wrong page again. So if this is Declan's personal page, you got a special insight into cookbook of the week that we normally do on Cookbook. <laughs> Love. That? So we'll go check and see. But hope you enjoyed. 